Welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. I'm Agi Keramidas and my mission is to inspire you to grow, stand out and take action towards the next level of your life. I interview leaders, authors, successful entrepreneurs, spiritual teachers, exceptional people who will inspire you to improve your life. Tune in for two episodes each week and make sure you subscribe to get them as soon as they are released. In today's show, I am delighted to speak with Seida Hassanali. Seida, you are a certified transformation and leadership coach and an intuitive healer based in uh, Toronto, Canada. You call yourself a soul adventurer and explorer and you are passionate about helping high impact individuals to unlock their inner potential and create new abundant pathways aligned with higher consciousness. Seida, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show with me today. Thank you, Aggie. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. And I'm uh, really excited to you know, be engaging with these conversations with you. And I'm sure it's going to be a very intriguing conversation. I have a, I have a feeling about it. Uh, shall we start with um, a little bit of context or of background? So... Of course, there are many things that you could talk about, but if I were to ask you for to give me um, a milestone moment in your journey, a key defining moment in your personal development journey, which one would you pick that uh, might make this conversation more relevant? Hmm. Okay, I think um, uh, probably the, the, the most transformational point for me was after I had just lost my best friend, she passed away. And I think in that moment, I had started to question, I started to have deeper questions about life. Um, I hadn't really thought about the deeper part of life up until that moment. It was just the daily, you know, mundane stuff. Uh, You know, being a wife, being a mother, being an employee was all about that. But there was a disconnect with the deeper aspect of life. And I think after she passed away, something just kind of opened up and I started asking all these. I was very curious about life. And um, I had also found that I was actually, you know, I was in a very um, not so great place at that time. And um, by profession, before I became a coach, I was uh, working at the bank as an actuary. Mm-hmm. It was very unsatisfying, right? Uh, just knowing that the rest of my life will be all about crunching numbers. Uh, it didn't make sense to me anymore. And so the kind of, and I, I believe also up until that moment, I felt that I was living in cause and effect. And therefore, I'm, I was a victim of life's circumstances. Mm-hmm. And I didn't necessarily know that I had a lot of power within me to make a change and to create a whole new pathway that was more aligned with my authenticity, right? And so when I, I think after her passing, um, I as I began my journey and I started listening to different teachers, there was a switch that was happening in my mind that there's no need to be a victim of life's circumstances and that you can actually be a co-creator of your life story and do the things that bring you joy and passion and just make you alive. You know, you're not just living life, but you're actually alive. Mm-hmm. And so when that, when, when I had that mindset shift, everything just changed after that. It was like a whole other world just opened up to me. So it was really just switching or, or, you know, having the, the transformation in the mindset and then the rest just opened up. How long did it take uh, for that mindset uh, shift to happen? Um, it's not usually, think, it's rarely a moment. It usually yeah. is a period of time, isn't it? Yeah. So there was a moment of like, there was an aha moment that uh-huh. set in. And that aha moment turned into an unraveling of, I would think it would took me about like, I think I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> I would say the process has ended, but the most pivotal part were probably the first three to six months. Mm-hmm. Because what started happening then was I had actually began working with a coach. And at that time, you know, the coaching was a very new phenomena and not many people knew about it, but there was mm-hmm. something that was just kind of pulling me to work with a coach. 
And when I began that journey and the transformation that I had within the first three months, I knew this was my calling. I knew this is where I wanted to go and this is who I wanted to be. And, and of course, like I said, the journey is still like, I'm still unlocking the journey. It hasn't stopped. But the first three months were where there was huge aha moments because I found the more I did my inner work, the more my outer reality started shifting. And I mean, I, I, I used to think like this is a miracle, but a miracle is just, you know, when you can't really have a direct connection between cause and effect, you call it a miracle. Right. Yes. And I, I couldn't necessarily see that the direct effect of the, the, the direct link between the cause and the effect. So it just felt like it was a miracle. But this I knew there was something bigger happening that I really wanted to get deeper into. And then thank, thankfully, we have some amazing, great teachers out in the world who teach about these things. So mm-hmm. it was in the beginning, I felt lonely because I'm like, what's going on? You know, I felt very lonely in this journey. But then I found some really great teachers and the journey just really beautifully opened up. There are many things that uh, come to mind out of what you what you said, and uh, one was that realizing that it is a journey because you said I haven't really arrived, and I think that's it, we never arrive to anywhere. Uh, it is an ongoing journey, yeah. and not everyone realizes that. So I think that's an important takeaway. But I also wanted to ask you because you said that you didn't know that you had this power inside of you to, you know, take control of your life and lead it to where you were. What would you say to someone listening now who feel like that, that, yes, this is great for you, but I don't feel I have the power? Yeah. So I was in that place too where I didn't feel that I had the power, and that was because I was in the victim place, Mm -hmm. right? Um, So when you're in that victim consciousness, uh, consciousness obviously means your awareness of your internal and your outer reality. That's mm-hmm. consciousness. And so victim consciousness is when you feel that you are, you know, a victim of life circumstances. And so life is happening to you or life is against you, right? It's not that life is happening for you. And um, so everything is, you know, perspective. So up until that moment, you know, where I personally was just looking at life in that way as well, that life is happening to me. And I'm just, you know, part of this motion of life and I just have to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. And so when you're when you're in that mindset, you don't realize the power that you have within you. So to answer your question, the first thing is to come out of the victim consciousness. It's the only way you can find that power. But then how do you come out of the victim (laughs) consciousness? Well, we start healing our wounds. Right. We start healing our um, our belief systems, our limited belief systems that have been holding us back. You start healing and and changing um, the you know, we may have like a lot of sabotaging narratives that we have picked up along the way and creating an awareness around that your emotional wounds. You know, we are we live in an era of intellectual intelligence, but these also and that was great, you know, it brought about the industrial revolution, a lot of great things happened from, from the IQ, but what, but it didn't take the wars away, right? It didn't take, it didn't take the poverty away. Mm -hmm. Um, So while IQ was great, and it helped build nations and the infrastructures, but what about EQ, which is the emotional intelligence, right? And so also healing our emotional wounds, so we can become stronger emotionally, and, and building our emotional intelligence. And that's a process that's, I guarantee you that's not an overnight uh, feat that can be achieved. It's a, it's a constant work in progress. And so I find that if we get into this practice of doing our inner work where we're healing our, our wounds, we are, we are coming out of the conditioning. You know, there's a lot of cultural conditioning, a lot of societal conditioning. And if we can start, you know, going deeper into that and seeing how we're being held back, and then stepping out of it and making the choice to step out of it. And mind you, the whole healing, these are, you know, these are few different modalities that come into play. They're different ways of healing, right? And finding whatever works for you. Once you have done that, what happens is now you've made space. You have emptied out all the unnecessary noise that's been inside of you in the form of emotional wounds, sabotaging narratives, limited belief systems, limited conditioning, 
all of that is noise that's disconnecting you from your inner power and your inner power is really connected to your authenticity, right? And this whole path of even like spiritually evolving, it's really a path of just becoming more authentic in who you are, right? And so I find that if we can make that room, then it's kind of like if I want to bring in, if I want to buy new furniture in my home, well, I got to remove the old furniture out. I got to make space for the new to come in. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, we got to first make space to bring the new energy in and, and, or, or make space for you to make that connection with your inner power. And it will come. It's not, it's, 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 it's an innate thing that exists within all of us. It's not something that I have figured out or you or, or that's only especially for you. We all have that, right? So it's just about making space to get in touch with that inner power. Mm-hmm. The, <laughs> it's, uh, I was thinking now of uh, the intuitive skills that uh, we all have and uh, whether we believe in, on, in that or not. I personally have uh, felt intuition or guidance, if you want, throughout my life, especially in the big things in life. Uh, and I'm very uh, always fascinated by processes that can enhance someone's uh, in- intuitive skills. And uh, this is wonderful what you say about creating the space and clearing out the noise. Uh, would you like to give me something more practical? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, like I mentioned to you earlier, um, at the moment I'm, uh, I'm, I've launched a course and I'm teaching a course that's three months long. Mm-hmm. And the course is called Unlocking New Pathways. And so some of the practical things that I've been implementing with the participants it has been, I, I get them to spend 15 minutes daily And in that 15 minutes, it's all about practicing the present moment. Mm -hmm. Now, for a lot of people, 30 seconds in and they can't handle it, right? Or or you finally start to get into a quiet space and then you get pulled out again, right? So what I found in my own experience is brain dumping, right? Mm -hmm. So I always tell them, use the Every, every single day, there has to be like a regular practice because you have so we have so many, we have tens of thousands of thoughts churning in our mind every single day. And we just carry them over from one day to the next, right? And so we're not really, we think we're moving ahead, but really we're just spinning in circles in the hamster wheel. It's what it feels like half the time, right? So what I have always, uh, so what I have encouraged my participants to do is brain dump every single day brain up everything that's churning in your mind and so i've asked them to split their 15 minute practice into brain dumping and the other half of that practice to just be present now being present is can be very difficult in the beginning i know for me it was it was a very um i couldn't focus right my mind would get pulled into so many different places but with the present moment if you can use an object a focal point nature a tree and just focusing on that tree for five minutes this is remember it's a practice that needs to be cultivated some people can do it for an hour some people can only last 30 seconds so it's a practice that just needs to be built but what is the beauty of practicing the present moment what does it really offer you it's helping you create space it's helping you create space so that the creative innate intelligence that's inbuilt in all of us can come forth, right? And so to answer your question to a practical thing that we can do to make space is brain dumping and just focusing for five, 10 minutes on something, on an innate object or, or nature, or tree, anything. And just looking looking at the the, the, um, the intricacy of the design of the tree, the texture, the, the, the colors, everything, but just focusing on that. And the other thing that I would say is breath. Because there is something about breath. And Aggie, you know what's really interesting is how to hear a lot of, you know, I had heard from enough people about connecting with breath. And honestly, rationally, okay, it kind of, I could, it was a, it was a concept that I could rationalize, but I wasn't, a, I couldn't really connect with it practically, right? But it's only when I got into the practice of, you know, every single day, just connecting with my breath. There is something about that. There's something very 
you know, um, there's something very mystical about just connecting with your breath. It opens you up into a whole, because as human beings, we're multidimensional, right? Rumi tells us that there's a whole universe unfolded within you, right? So we're, that means we're multidimensional beings, we're, beings. we're not just 3D, right? We are 4D, we're 5D, these, these higher dimensions of ourselves. So when we connect to breath, it opens you up to higher dimensions within yourselves. And these higher dimensions gives you access to higher potential, mm. right? So yeah, I hope, I hope that answers your question. Yes, you have, and uh, and I love that uh, what you what you just said. Absolutely. Um, one more clarifying question: When you say brain dumping, do you mean just journaling, writing down whatever comes to mind for five minutes with no structure, just write down and everything? Freestyle brain dumping. Freestyle brain dumping. Freestyle. Okay. When you yeah, I would say freestyle brain dumping is just, it's just you're offloading is what Off- you're doing. Right. And offloading cannot really have a structure. Right. Uh, when you're creating something, yes, that could need a structure. But when you're offloading, it's just letting it all out. So mm-hmm. there's no real structure around it. It's just complete freestyle. And what I usually do and what I encourage the participants in my courses are burn it. Why? Because thoughts are energy. So when you connect pen to paper, something very powerful happens. You're just transmitting a lot of that energy out of your headspace onto paper. Mm -hmm. And we know that energy from physics, we know that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It simply changes from one form to another. So when you're burning it, you're just shifting the energy out of you. And this is something that you'd have to do to experience it. But oh my goodness, something just happens where you just feel so much lighter. Mm-hmm. Just that act of brain dumping and burning in itself can be a, it's a very powerful, powerful practice. Thank you, Shade. I haven't done this in <clears throat> probably 20 years or more, this writing down and burning the paper. So I'm certainly going to do it as soon as I have the next opportunity, maybe tonight as well. It sounds... I really uh... recommend it. I do highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Can I, I wanted to ask you something uh, you mentioned earlier about emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm actually going to quote back to you something I read on your your page. And it was of one of your uh, teachers, George Dispenza. So Mm -hmm. um, he said, to become the master of our thoughts and emotions, like a phoenix, we need to be able to sit in the discomfort of the fire. Sitting in the fire is both the process and the initiation. I love, I hadn't read of this before, uh, but I wanted your thoughts about this sitting uh, like a phoenix in the, in the fire and this, uh, because becoming the master of our emotions and our thoughts, I think if we become the master of that, I don't know if there's much more left to master. <laughs> No, I think once you become the master of your emotions and thoughts, then you are on a complete different level when it comes to creating, Mm. right? Then even your manifestation, because manifestation is a creation process, Mm -hmm. right? But once you can master that, then the creation process completely opens up for you. And synchronicities will show up. Yeah, the the author of The Alchemist, the book, the book, The Alchemist, Uh, Paulo Coelho, he says, when you want something, the entire universe will conspire to make it happen for you. Mm -hmm. So it's building ourselves to that level that when even the thought that we put out, the universe conspires to make that thought into a reality, right? So this sitting, this process of sitting in the ring of fire, oh, it is the most painful and the most liberating thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So this ring of fire in the in this in the context of what Joe Dispenza is talking about is it's really sitting in the discomfort of your emotions. And that's why for a lot of people practicing the present moment is so difficult because it's very uncomfortable. Because as soon as you quite you get into a quiet space, your mind gets bombarded with so many things of the past, regrets, um, resentments failures you name it so much is being bombarded so sitting in that ring but in order to uh, 
climb or, 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 or you know, it's kind of like you're mountain climbing. You're trying to get to the top. It's not an easy journey, but it's so worthwhile. But it's being able to, to find that courage to really just sit with your emotions, being in that ring of fire, right? And when you sit with the emotions and you allow an emotion to, because there's a lot of, I guess there's a lot of things that are stored in our subconscious mind that we're not even aware of. Mm-hmm. We don't know half the things that are, 90%, not even half, we don't know 90% of the things that hold us back because we're just operating from a conscious mind, which is just the 5%, but 95 is your subconscious. But how do we allow the contents of the subconscious mind to show up in the conscious, in the in the surface, so that you can actually release it? Well, you have to go still. You have to go quiet so you can make room for the stuff to come up. And that's really that that's the initiation process. That's the ring of fire that you're sitting in because it's a very uncomfortable thing. Now, for me personally, in the beginning, I couldn't do it on my own. And so I worked with a coach Hmm. because it was almost impossible to sit in that ring of fire. It was almost impossible identifying my blind spots, my invisible barriers. And so working with the coach is what really just catapult, you know, it was a catapulted that journey, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's the discomfort that he's talking about, you know. And we know it's it's not fun sitting there. <laughs> not at right? all, and, and that's why the majority of people do everything they can to avoid that. So yeah. distracting themselves or doing whatever it is, not to feel it. Uh, that's it. And I think we can all uh, hold ourselves guilty for <laughs> doing that at some point or at many points. I know I have. <laughs> and I think that's. The, that's the blessing of COVID, yeah. right? Um, because it forced everybody to slow down. It forced everybody to slow down. Everybody was isolated in their homes. And mm. when you're at home, the triggers are left, right, and center. They show up because you're just always in that one space with the same people. Mm. And especially relationships, it's through relationships that the most growth happens anyways, because relationships often mirror a lot of the stuff within your own self. Right. So COVID forced everybody to kind of slow down and all everyone's, you know, turbulent chaos started surfacing. Right. But it's, I, you know, I, I really hope the um, people can have that that understanding that it's just an opportunity to release because I know so many breakdowns are happening. Right. With mental health. Um, and I wish everybody could kind of just see it as an opportunity for stuff that's just coming up to be offloaded. You know, but then also teaching, you know, having the right tools to offload and whatnot is also very critical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hi, it's Aggie here, interrupting you with something you may find useful. The most frustrating feeling is when you're trying to focus, but you can't get your brain to concentrate and let you zone in on the important work in front of you. This happens to me all the time, especially the days that I feel I have too many different things to do. And if it happens to you, you are not alone. 40% of people say they have to make a big effort to concentrate. This isn't some minor thing. But if you're having trouble getting focused, I have a solution for you. I'm so excited to be partnering with Brain FM. Brain FM is a great app. And I use it to block out mental chatter and zone in on my number one priority of the day. Brain FM uses functional music backed by science and research, which is designed to give us that extra edge when we need our undivided attention. But they also have relaxation, meditation and deep sleep modules that help you unwind and recharge. So if you want to be able to place your full attention exclusively in the activity you choose, whether that's meaningful work, relaxing, or getting high quality sleep, right now, Personal Development Mastery Podcast listeners get 20% off Brain FM subscription at brain.fm slash agi. That's an amazing deal for such a great app. That's B-R-A-I-N dot F-M slash A-G-I. Thousands of people have given five-star reviews to Brain FM. Find out why? Brain dot F-M slash Aggie. Uh, 
Um, can I ask you something uh, slightly different? Um, mm-hmm. You talk about uh, the art of conscious manifestation. So I wanted to ask you, first of all, how do you define conscious manifestation? And then uh, we can discuss a little bit more about that if you want. Absolutely. So I'd actually like to perhaps um, talk about the different stages of manifestation, mm-hmm. right? And how consciousness is tied to that, right? Sure. So the first stage of manifestation, of course, these are things that I have learned from my coaches, my teachers, reading books, and just going through the process myself. Um, so the first stage is the victim consciousness, right? Which again, the emotional intelligence is shut off. Um, and you're really just operating from a very egoistic space. And uh, many times you just feel like you're a victim of life circumstances, but you can still manifest, right? We we go to university, we look for a job, we're in the process of creating. So that's still happening, except that process of creation is a very, it's like pulling teeth, you know? It's a very, um, it's, it's a very turbulent kind of process. You're forcing things, these constant obstacles and roadblocks, and it's just, It's not a fun process, but many people still do it. And that's like, and that's how I started, you know, being in that victim stage. Mm -hmm. And then you evolve to the next level. And the next level is, you know, the things that we learn from the books, like The Secret and whatnot, where in order to manifest the things you want, you have to become that person. So, you know, if you visualize, um, you know, a, a, a more, a better relationship or a better job, then coming into that state of, you know, feeling what you would love to feel in that new relationship or that new job, becoming that person now, tapping into that emotions now, coming into spaces of gratitude, and then creating from that space. And law of attraction kicks in and all of that. So that's kind of like the second level Mm -hmm. or stage of manifestation. Mm -hmm. And then a third stage of manifestation is a higher conscious stage of manifestation. So like I mentioned earlier, consciousness is a state of awareness of your internal and your outer reality. As you do the work and you peel the layers of your ego, you are able to connect with a much deeper part of yourself that doesn't have a singular agenda. It is more, it is now, there's more like a universal thing that's happening for the Mm -hmm. better good, for the higher good. Right. And there's obviously more joy and success attached to that as well. But that third stage of manifestation requires a level of surrender. Okay. Where even everything you've learned from the secret and the law of attraction, you are now, you're not necessarily manifesting what you want, but you're going into a space and you're asking, you're asking the universe within you, how can I serve? Or another reframe for that would be, what would you like to create through me? Right? So asking the universal intelligence within you, what would you like to create through me? And then surrendering to that. Now that is you stepping into an unknown space. You're starting to now create things from in a very unknown space. So it requires... You know, a lot of inner work to get to that place where you're now letting go of the reins and you're like, okay, show me, I will show up, show me the path and I will show up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the thing it asks of you is very terrifying, but there's also a sense of excitement attached to it. So you know that you're on the right track. And so that level of conscious manifestation is a very powerful place to be in. But then there's a fourth stage. And Aggie, if I was to be completely honest with you, I only understand it in theory. I don't know what it necessarily feels like or looks like. I only understand it theoretically. Mm-hmm. And that higher fourth stage is the stage of beingness. So when you become one with everything and everyone, there's no separation. There's no I attached to it. The ego has completely disintegrated. Personally, I'm not at that level. Work in progress, working towards there because it feels like a very nice space to be in, mm-hmm. but not there yet. And I'm honoring my journey. I'm not here to fast track the journey. I'm just honoring everything that comes along the way. But from what I understand conceptually, at that level, whatever you think, just the thought will right away manifest into the reality. That is the speed of manifestation. 
So the higher your conscious state, the higher your awareness, the more, the faster, the faster the rate of manifestation. And wouldn't that be nice, Aggie? <laughs> yes, if one right? reads, absolutely. It's like we're, we're like magicians all of a sudden, right? Like <clears throat> we, it's like putting out an intention and it just manifests right away. And it's a very, it's a very powerful, empowering place to be in. And I believe in that state because the ego is kind of coming out. The impact that that, that can have on family dynamics, the impact that that can have on societal structures, on business structures, can be such a game changer. Mm -hmm. Right. I think if if more people would uh, climb up that ladder that you mentioned, going to the even the second stage would be great if more people hop on to that. But then, of course, there is this this third level that you were describing that I believe more and more people are realizing this spiritual path and I'm, I'm using the term very loosely uh, it uh, there is something i was reading on your uh, website about uh, you know people that you work with or people who resonate with, with you and there was a, a something that you wrote let me find it it was very oh yes it was if you have immersed yourself into personal development and are ready for the next stage in your awakening so i liked very much this phrase because I know personally and I believe others can relate as well that when you embark on personal development journey and you solely focus on the personality or the skills or there is a limit that eventually you will hit or you might keep on going and going without the next level there is a whole different level but that is a spiritual or another you said earlier about the dimensions the the third the four five i think it is shifting up a, a whole mm -hmm. gear a whole dimension when you you change like that and uh, mm -hmm. because you don't operate from a sense of i will do this is for me you operate from more of a sense of community or contribution or giving that's it and you know what i find blocks people from moving into this path and why they're so stuck in the eye and the ego you know ego has a very bad reputation and i think that needs to change too because ego just exists because it's it's a shield it's a defense mechanism for underlining pain, insecurities, trauma, whatever it is that mm. generate, we also, epigenetics shows us that we also inherit, the same way we inherit physical traits, we also inherit inherit generational uh, wounds and traumas, right? So when we, we kind of come to that place and we understand that that's why ego is there, then make friends with your ego. I always I always say this in my, in, in my workshops that I host, have a cup of sit down, have a sit down cup of tea with your ego. Have a conversation. It's like going into a boardroom, having a sit down and saying, hey, what's going on? Why are you even there? Why are you acting up? Where is this coming from? Just having a very friendly engagement until you get to the core of it. So I feel like ego has a very bad reputation, but it's there as a defense mechanism. So let's sit with it. Let's give it some space and get to the bottom of why it's there. And once you get to the root and you heal the root or you release the root, the ego doesn't need to be there anymore. And then it's easy to transition out of the I and more into, well, how can I be of service? It's a much easier, joyful transition that happens. And it's a very organic process. You don't have to force it, yeah. you know? Mm. And so, yeah. Awesome. Um, say that, do you want to tell us about uh, your uh, your course as well? The, the, you have this course, the Unlocking New Pathways. So can you tell me who is it for and what it is that you do? Yeah, absolutely. So this course, um, the courses that I hold are for, you know, um, up until now, it's been mostly women, but now it's kind of opening up. I've always been a huge advocate for empowering women, and supporting them and getting them to level up, reach their higher potential. Um, I find for me personally, you know, even like culturally, there's a lot of things that kind of hold us back, uh, a lot of conditioning. And so it's just about breaking out of that, right? Mm -hmm. Out of all that conditioning. Mm -hmm. 
And so this course is really about um, literally about unlocking your genius. And through unlocking the genius within you, you're unlocking new pathways Right. So uh, these are women who are high impact women who want to who have been on the personal development journey and they want to connect with their bigger why and they want to create something from the bigger why. Mm -hmm. Right. So through the course, the course has been designed in such a way that the first part of it is about creating an opening and allowing them to connect with their deeper why. Mm -hmm. And once that has been established, and then it, we go into the co-creation process where we start to co-create. And what's really beautiful about the co-creation process is that it has so many synchronicities in it, you know? And, and so just allowing these women to really turn their impossible asks into possible reality, you know? And letting them go through that experience. And so all of my courses are very experiential based. I don't do a lot of content teaching. The expectation is... If you want to understand something, there's so many different books and podcasts that you can listen to, but this is more just completely experiential and just letting them, I feel listening to something is very different from experiencing it, right? So if they can go through this transformational journey and experience all of these amazing things, and, and it's usually three to four months long, then that's it. That shifts them completely. Because once you've experienced something, you can go back on it. Right. It's, it's done. It's, it's set in stone. Then you're just building uh, above that. Mm -hmm. So that's really what the course is all about is helping you make space, helping you connect to your deeper why, opening up the creative intelligence or intuition, as we like to call it, and then co-creating a path from that space. And what come, what has been coming through for a lot of these participants is mind blowing, something they never thought was even possible for them. And then obviously, helping helping them take inspired action steps because the intuition can come in but then taking an action step based on that intuition is a whole other ball game <laughs> right because depending on your intuition you can be asking something that's very scary and intimidating so i also hold space for them and i motivate them to take that action step and create what it is that they're feeling inspired to create mm -hmm. um and and the end game is to be agents of change uh, to bring more healing, to bring more harmony in our communities, in our businesses, bringing consciousness into business structures as well. I think we'll, you know, um, as a child, I, I remember I wanted, you know, I was always like, oh, I want to change the world. And as you grow up, you realize there's nothing really you can change because you're in that victim place. And then I think after my journey started unfolding, I realized I have so much power to change. Um, I just have to believe in this path and see where it takes me. And again, when I look back over the last like four or five years that I've been on this journey and I look at all the women I've worked with and I see what they're doing, it's mind blowing, you know, and it's just like this whole network of change and movement that this that slowly gets created. And it's just like a ripple effect, a domino effect. And so it's really fun to watch. It's very joyful. And there's a sense of contentment that you know what, I am I am living my life on purpose and I'm living on li my life with intent. It's not by accident, it's not by default. Yeah. You know, I'm actually creating something and it's, it's a very beautiful, empowering space to be in. Yeah. And there's one more thing I'd like to add here that's coming to my mind, mm -hmm. something that Dr. Wayne Dyer has said in his book, The Power of Intention, mm -hmm. that when, you know, when just one person can, can raise their vibrations and come to a space of, non-judgment and just unconditional love just that raise in their internal vibration has the potential of shifting and recalibrating 90,000 individuals who are calibrating at a lower level and that shows us how interconnected life is so when one person does their inner work it has an impact on 90,000 individuals that I will never see in my lifetime or even talk to right but that shift in energy shifts that collective energy as well. And so when I when I read that, I was like, wow, like <laughs> if only we understood how much power we have. No? Yeah. So yeah. Um, that book, The Power of Intention, is one of my favorite uh, books. Really? And I had forgotten what you just said. I remember now and uh, when you were mentioning it. And... Uh, 
you know, when we work on ourselves and uh, become better or raise a vibration or grow, that's how we change the world because we are the world as well or we are part of it. So, but that's, I think it's the the only, if, if not the only, the easiest way to change the world is by changing yourself. <laughs> that's, that's how it. I see it. <laughs> that's it. Absolutely. Mm. Um, and many people understand it as a concept, but not many people have experienced it, right? But I welcome everyone to go through this process because it's the most liberating thing that can happen. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, Seda, I would like to also ask you some uh, quick fire questions to start uh, okay. wrapping this uh, conversation up. So my first one is, what does personal development mean to you? Hmm. Personal development means embarking on a journey where you are tapping into your highest potential and going on this journey of unlocking pathways that take you to that higher potential. Because mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it's this gift of life is, is becomes a wasted gift if you're not able to to tap and connect to your highest potential. So that's really what self-development means to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also in that same regard, self-development is also this journey where as you're tapping into your higher potential, you're also becoming an agent of change, kind of like an ambassador of the universe. Right. I love that that uh, description, <laughs> the agent of change I had heard before, but ambassador of the universe, I hadn't. So that's a beautiful description. Um, let me ask you one hypothetical question as well, Seida. If you could go back in time and meet your 18-year-old self, what's the one piece mm -hmm. of advice you would give her? Oh, I love this question. <laughs> Be fearless and dream big. And um, based on all this conversation that we had, I know we talked about uh, all sorts of things and you already gave some actionable items, but I'm going to ask you to give to the listener one more out of the whole conversation, something that they can take away and implement and start doing or building on it to, to improve. Mm -hmm. you know, what's, what uh, advice would you give the listener? So I would say um, probably the best the best practice to engage in mm -hmm. as you are embarking on this journey is uh, journaling. Uh, so journaling, these two forms of journaling, one is the brain dumping journaling, which I talked about earlier, where you're just offloading all the, the repetitious thoughts. The second form of journaling is wisdom journaling. Wisdom journaling is something very, it's a very sacred act, actually, wisdom journaling. So pen to paper, when you connect pen to paper, the brain dump process happens, but that makes space for now your intuitive intelligence or your creative intelligence to come forth. And for me, a lot of my creativity, Aggie, comes through wisdom journaling. Mm -hmm. When I just connect pen to paper, I have no idea what it is that I'm writing. I'm just opening up that creative channel and I'm like, okay, I'm just channeling information from my, from my creative, from the creative intelligence that's inbuilt. And I'm just wisdom journaling and just bringing in all that information that I need. So even when I host my retreat, I've hosted a few uh, international retreats. When I do my retreats, when I'm launching my courses, Aggie, every detail of all of that comes from wisdom journaling through wisdom mm -hmm. journaling. Where should I go? When should I go? How much should I charge? How many participants should I open this up to? Every detail comes from that space. And I and it was not something that happened over overnight. It was, again, a practice that you build. Mm -hmm. So journaling is something that needs to be, um, you need to make that, like everyone needs to make that a practice, a constant, regular practice. You know, And in that way, you also get to meet yourself at a deeper level. You get to cultivate, you get to establish a relationship with your authentic self. And so much, so much wonder, childlike wonder can even come from that. Mm. I'm also so. a big, a big proponent of, of journaling and uh, I know the, the, the power that uh, ink has when you put it on, on paper. <laughs> something. And it's also allowing the expressive energy, right? 
Because um, yes. many of us, you know, our, our throat energy center is always blocked because expressiveness hasn't been there out of fear or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But when we go into that, it's like just opening up those expressive channels. Mm. And that, that's so healing as well and yeah. expansive. Mm. Awesome. Um, where would you direct people who want to connect with you and find out more about uh, what you do, Shada? Um So at the moment, my website is being rebranded. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have been going through a, a process where I've been questioning my deeper why. And as I get connected to a deeper why, it turns out that even how I've expressed myself on my website, there's a need to change that as well. So right now, my website is, going, uh, is being redone, but they can... Follow me on Instagram, my mm-hmm. Insta handle, Seda underscore Hassanali. And uh, you'll have you'll get access to all of my future projects, my courses, and uh, just whatever um, philanthropy work that I'm being engaged that I'm engaging in. That's brilliant. And I will put a, a, on a little side note just to give you a little bit of perspective that you might not have thought of because you were saying about uh, rebranding the website. Right now we're recording this it's 2021 someone might be very well here in this in 2023 or beyond so keep also always keep that in in mind that this this conversation will will stay here for hopefully a very long time uh, and help help people and uh, give them some inspiration hopefully to to improve to do something to change Absolutely. Uh, and on that note, so the website is coachseida.com is the website name. Awesome. Um, Seida, I want to thank you very much for uh, your time, for this uh, intriguing and fascinating conversation we had. Uh, I learned a lot and I'm sure that the, the listener got much of value and uh, hopefully insights from uh, this. I want to wish you all the very best and I really admire your mission to empower women. We certainly need that and it's it's happening, but uh, I, I think it's uh, necessary and admirable. So I wish you all the very best uh, with that. Thank you. Um, any, been, part in, any part in words? Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure and honor. Uh, thank you for holding space for this conversation. Um, I, I'm... Uh, I have, I've been, you know, we've been in touch for the last few months. We've known each other for the last few months. And I was always intrigued by by you and the kind of work that you do. So thank you for having me here. It's It's been a real pleasure. And um, all I want to think my one last parting uh, comment here would be that we have so much creative uh, energy built in us. It would be how beautiful would be if everyone tapped into it. Can we imagine the world that we can create from just connecting with our creative intelligence power that mm. has been given to us? It's innate. So that's just my one, just something to ponder on the, what kind of world can we create if we were to all unlock our hidden powers? So yeah, just a, a, a question to think about. So thank you, Aggie. I hope you enjoyed listening and I have a question for you. How would you like a blueprint to your personal development? If you sometimes think that there are so many different things out there you could do for your personal growth but you're not sure on where to start or what's the next best step. If you'd like a blueprint to help you take control of your personal development, your focus, habits, confidence, and ultimately your time and energy, then you will love my online course, Essential Personal Development Blueprint. The link is in the show notes or type bit.ly slash agis course, A-G-I-S course. And until next time, stand out, don't fit in, 